Hello everyone, and welcome back to Castlevania. So, there's actually a treasure I forgot to pick up before moving on. So I'm gonna go back and get that uh, right now. It's nothing huge like equipment or whatever, but it's well worth grabbing anyway. Oh yeah, traps have an attack power too, so their damage is reduced by armor. And here we go! Quite a bit of Reval. Gonna need it. So, now we're back at the chapel. And we can fix this organ. The cross, the key, and the pipe. And the path to the next area opens right on up. Welcome to another sewer. In it, there are bugs like the ones we fought in the lava zone. And a whole bunch of other nasties. Like these, uh, lovely specimens of horticulture. There are a couple of things to get down here. One of which is extremely important to my future mental well-being. Yeah, Castle... Uh, yeah, the Lusting Castle is big enough that it actually has about five different save points. Just for the one area. And there's going to be another one right at the end of this section. One of my problems with the final dungeon is that it's almost as big as the Lusting Castle, but it only has two save points, one right outside and one right at the end. Okay, kill some moths, silverfish, and we're going to be going up first because that leads to a particularly important uh, piece of treasure that I want to pick up. These games tend not to just encourage exploration, but they almost mandate the whole thing. Not exploring just sort of leads to controller breaking frustration now later down the road. jumps later. I didn't mean to use all of that wind magic. Just sorta happened. Now a bit of platforming here. And a lot more platforming later, that's for sure. Which leads us to this room. It's a red chest, so you know it's important. And the Battle Sword. That finishes off uh, this tier of equipment. And looking good.
Yeah, one of my favorite implementations of treasure chests in dungeon crawling yeah, actually has to go to another Falcom game, Xanadu Next, where if you go back to a treasure chest that you've actually looted of its important uh, item, it will be refilled with some gold or other, which can actually be pretty useful. So uh, there are reasons to go back and uh, take a look at old uh, treasures. Really should finish Xanadu next one of these days. Now, there we go. Damn it. Monsters always get in my way. Why can't they just leave me alone? And kill this thing just for good measure. And there we go, a big pile of gold, which we still need by the way. Upgrading the final equipment is really, really expensive. So we've got ourselves a save point, which means we can go back and upgrade our sword at Redmont. Fast travel is really one of the best things you can include in a game like this. Now we're ready to face what's next. As well as our next boss. Okay! Do you know what uh, Zerdoros was in... Wanderers from East. He was a knight in blue armor with an axe walking across a bridge. And they changed him to this guy. So Zerdoros is pretty tough. He has all kinds of attacks like uh, the rocket barrage, homing missiles, machine guns, a wave motion cannon, giant centaur robo tank that can also jump stomp. The key to beating him is to uh, slam him in the back with the charged earth magic. It'll protect you against a lot of his attacks. Plus, if you do it at the right enough angle, you'll get a lot of hits on him. Some people find this guy tougher than uh, Death Valiant. But the fact that his weakness uh, is something that can give you temporary invincibility means he's never been too much of a trouble for me. Even though my hit points may not necessarily reflect that by the end of this fight. And done and done. One giant robo tank defeated. Another pathway opened. Now let's see what that guy was blocking. Just adventuring. No, it's evil plans and monsters that have caused most of the problems. Let's be fair about that.
You and everyone else, lady. Oh, yeah, there is that thing. Okay, we now have official sister sanction to stomp Chester's face in. Well, believe it, buddy. Yeah, wait a minute, so who's left of the, uh, the Lasting Castle staff? There's Andre, the two soldiers out front, Fran, and that's about it. And who are you? Oh. I was just about to say. I think he did survive also in Wanderers. That's a good bet. So anyway... The Clock Tower. There's more of that slippy slidey goo, but we have a way around that too. That's right, the stone shoes negate it. Yeah, all of the, uh little environmental items you've acquired earlier in the game are useful in Velestine Castle, and that's actually a pretty nice touch. Okay, these Golden Knights are jerks. They are also extremely vulnerable to stunning. If you try to fight them without stunning, well, you're in for some pain as you will be seeing. So, welcome to the Clock Tower. Like any proper Clock Tower, keeping time is only its secondary function. As Bishop Nicholas told us, its primary purpose was handling the power of the statues. Also, the spikes here have a higher attack power than the spikes in other places in the castle. I don't even know how that works. So, there's a whole lot of climbing involved here, which means that there's also very many opportunities for falling. And if I can fall down a pit, I will find some way to do it, as demonstrated earlier. At least the music is great, but that's kind of expected. Oh, it's one of these counterweight puzzles. Just one of those things. A perfect example of what I was talking about right there. Still, at least there are no Medusa heads or functional equivalents.
That would automatically make this the worst East game. Okay, like that, like that. And there we go. We need to recollect all four of the statues before we can move on. Because each gate of the various floors of the tower won't actually open up until you've collected a uh, statue. By the way, like Castlevania, the internal layout of Valestin Castle makes almost zero sense. How come no one builds a clock tower for telling what hour it is? It always seems to ha needs to have some secret function or whatever. Though I do like that when asked about why there was no uh, clock tower in Lament Hint of uh, Innocence, Igarashi was like takes place in the 11th century. What clocks? Well, of this kind, anyway. So, apparently I went entirely the wrong way, but that's okay. I get to smash a couple more of these knights. They do reliably drop revolve. They also hit like trucks, which is a big problem for me. Okay, that way I was going up was the way forward, but this is the way I need to go, actually. Because here's the second statue. Yeah, the clock tower in Wanderers was not this elaborate, but it was still some pretty vicious platforming, if I remember correctly. Oh, hey, the slugs are back. This would be a problem if I didn't know that stone shoes actually worked. And I think one of the big problems with Wanderers overall is that it didn't really have the environmental stuff that was present even in the East 2. Mainly, dungeons were monsters, and that was about it. They didn't really have any truly special features, for the most part. Back, thank you. Uh, 
and I'll be taking that hit, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have to give a bit of a disclosure. The thing that put me in a good enough mood to actually try out Oath again and really work at uh, finishing it on uh, normal mode rather than on easy, which I had done when the, the game was first released on Steam, was that I found out that... This is entirely unrelated to Ease, actually that the PC port of uh, Sakura Wars uh, 1 is getting a fan translation by people who are actually seriously invested in seeing it uh, finished, and right now uh, they've uh, completed about a third. Not of the uh, translation, but of the entire process, and that includes insertion and uh, hacking and all of that. Sometimes you just need to really be in the uh, right frame of mind to attempt something that has really uh, stomped you before. And there's another statue for us. I think what's really unfortunate but about the uh, East series is that there won't actually be any more um, uh, Steam releases of that series because there are no other East games that have had uh, PC versions and it's beyond the ability of XE to actually do a port of those games. So as much as I'd like to see Memories of Cell set on PC so I could actually play it, it's not gonna happen. Okay, I was messing around there because I thought there was a way to use those to get higher up. Okay, we finished all of the platforming, now there's just some really nasty fighting to do. This room has about six golden knights, so death is possible, but I'm going to kill all of them anyway.
And it's only really in these recent playthroughs that I've started uh, working on exploiting the offensive powers of the boost ability. Because it doesn't increase your damage, it just rapidly speeds up your attacks. So you can get a lot more individual uh, hits in during enemy vulnerability phases. And here we are! The last save point of Valestine Castle. And I will be seeing you next time when we finish this dungeon off. Goodbye!